Good morning and half a day, middle school and upper school. We are on day 13 in our 40-day Lent journey. Last time we met, that was last Ash Wednesday, I mentioned that the season of Lent invites us to go to a wilderness journey. Wilderness in the Bible is a place where people encounter God. Think of Hagar and her son Ishmael. Think of Moses, the people of Israel. Think of Elijah the prophet, John the Baptist, Jesus, and many of our ancestors in the faith. The wilderness as a meeting place for God makes sense because it is far from many of the usual distractions of work, people, food, Wi-Fi, entertainment, and others. The invitation is not to literally go to the wilderness, although it would be nice to go to the wilderness as well. It would be helpful, actually. But the invitation to go to the wilderness during this season of Lent means to take some time off from our busy schedule so that we have time to check our spiritual temperature. During this season of Lent, we are invited to check how our spirit is doing. Is it healthy? Is it aching? Is it lost? Is it tired? And so we need to make time to check how our spiritual life is doing. And that's what the season of Lent gives us. It's a grace period for us to check in with God. And actually, the chapel that we do, even if it's only for a short time, it's like a time spent in the wilderness. Because during chapel, we try to unplug from our usual busy schedule and we plug ourselves to God. And so, as we begin, I invite you to settle in, to sit comfortably in your chairs with your back straight, bow your heads, close your eyes, Breathe and take a moment of silence. Now I invite you to confess your sins against God and your neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. The Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, he strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We can now sing our opening song.
from the Gospel of Luke. Some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you are not willing. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes to, in the name of the Lord, the word of the Lord. What image comes to your mind when you think of God? Do you think of Jesus or the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or Mama Mary, or any of the saints? Or if you are like many people, meaning uh, that includes believers and non-believers of God, maybe you think of God as an old man with long beard who sits on his throne in heaven which is usually up there in the clouds. Is that your image of God? Here are some popular images of God. King, Lord, um, Judge, Creator, Ruler of Heaven and Earth, Good Shepherd, Savior, Messiah, Prince of Peace, Lamb of God, Advocate, Holy Wisdom, etc. Images photos, pictures are helpful. They serve as media or mediums or bridges. We need images of God, especially because we cannot see God. The images help us visualize God and connect with God when we pray. Just like Photos of family members that we have not met or have not seen in a long time help us connect and be closer to them. So also the images of God help us help bring the invisible God seeable, patchable, closer, and relatable. In our Bible lesson today, Jesus was in Jerusalem when some Pharisees warned him to leave the city because they have intel information that Herod, King Herod, wanted to kill him. Referring to Herod as fox, Jesus boldly told the Pharisees to go ahead and tell Herod that he, Jesus, has no time to be afraid because he's busy casting out demons and healing and he intends to finish his work. Then he proceeded to lament for Jerusalem, saying, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you are not willing. Jesus laments for Jerusalem because the people do not know what's good for them. God kept sending them prophets and messengers to call them back to God, to remind them that they have gone astray, that they are in the wrong path, and that they are headed to destruction. But instead of listening to God's messengers, Jerusalem killed the prophets of God. In his lament, Jesus refers to himself as a mother hen, fierce in her love to gather her chicks under her wings to protect them from predators like the fox. But like the chicks who are unwilling to be gathered under Jesus' wings, Jerusalem to refuse to return to God. I love this image of God as a mother hen. It is unusual and stunning because it is different from most of the images 
of God that we know. Most images of God portray God as powerful, almighty, king of kings, lord of lords. Jesus in this passage portrays himself as a vulnerable mother, aching and longing for her wandering chicks to come home to her. It is a deeply disturbing and uncomfortable image, yet at the same time it's also greatly powerful, comforting, and reassuring as it reminds us of Jesus on the cross with his hands spread wide open. Like the people of Jerusalem in Jesus' time, we do not pay much attention to God. Each of us prefer to do our own thing. We have our own definition of what is good. And as far as we are concerned, we are good. We are doing good. Thank you very much. And we do not need the church or the priest or God to tell us that something is not right with us and therefore we need repentance. We may not kill prophets and messengers that God sends to us to remind us to change our ways and to return to God, but doing our own thing and living as if God does not exist or do not matter means the same thing. And so, as we continue our journey this Lent, I encourage us to keep in mind this message, this image of God as a mama chicken, longing, calling, inviting us to come back to God. And I hope that we take this offer and gather under God's protective wings. I hope we take this opportunity, this time of Lent, this grace period to return to God. Amen. community that in this season of Lent we may embrace the disciplines of prayer, fasting, self-denial, and giving and learn anew that we do not live by bread alone, but by the word of God. Lord, have mercy. For the people of Ukraine that they may prevail in the protection of their homeland, for war-torn countries around the world, for all who suffer because of war, and for world leaders that they may cooperate with one another to establish justice, harmony, and peace in the world. Lord, have mercy. For refugees around the world, that they may find welcome and hospitality from their neighbors. For the homeless and poor in our own island, that we may become good neighbors to them. Lord, have mercy. Lord, make us an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. 
further send this joy. O Divine Master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Let us recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. In celebration of uh, Mess tomorrow, let us pray for Guam. Holy and Great Spirit, who birthed all peoples in all tribes of the earth, we thank you for this beautiful island, for the Chamorro people, for their generous hospitality and their rich history and culture. We also thank you for the diverse peoples and cultures that make living in Guam enjoyable, relaxed, and pleasant. Bless the people of Guam and this island, and help us to celebrate the unique culture and contributions of the Chamorro people by doing our part to support efforts to make Guam peaceful and prosperous. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now bless our birthday celebrants who are celebrating their birthdays on March 16 to 31. So please stand up birthday celebrants so we can pray for you. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, in your servants, your children, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace. Strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We wish all our birthday celebrants a happy, meaningful, enjoyable, fun birthday. And now for our closing prayer. I'm going to read to us, a Native American prayer of blessing. May the sun bring you new energy by day. May the moon softly restore you by night. May the rain wash away your worries. May the breeze blow new strength into your being. May you walk gently through the world and know its beauty all the days of, the, of your life. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord and let us sing our closing song.
Stop! 